Red Colony. Didn't even feel like we had to come down for an hour. Went by fast. Are you good there? Mm -hmm. We're good. Yeah, that looks like a fish. The one on which... Is this a sea cucumber? Can we have a look at this? Or And also, any one of those whips that we see. Sure, go ahead, Mia. Thank you. Oh, and there's oh, a... Jaina. <laughs> umbilula or a pseudo umbilula. That's imminent. That is a sea cucumber. And... This would be the first one. Are you making Probably. up for yesterday or the other day? <laughs> <laughs> this is the actual sea cucumber. That's not the kind that I eat. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. If you put it in seawater, probably then it's like yeah. Okay. Soups, That's usually. Yeah. A lot. A lot. There's an umbilula at the back. Uh, um, so um, recently the family umbilulidae and the genus umbilulidae there has been they have been split up into umbilular pseudo umbilular solar umbilular i have to look up uh, it's based on the number of uh, polyps that we have at the terminal end uh, so it is an umbilular like can colony maybe there, a it? true umbilular oh. i can check the number of polyps i always forget that number but it's a beautiful colony and sometimes we can see my said shrimps close to the polyps. Uh, so this is another kind of a sea pen. This is a sea pen. And here again, you can see uh, that it's an octocoral because each of those polyps have eight tentacles with pinules extending from each of those tentacles. And there are the my said shrimps that I was just talking about. So this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven polyps. I'll keep I'll take a note of that and confirm the genus in a little while. Wow, what an interesting shape. Yeah. It yeah. is. It's like a star, like a snowflake. Yeah. Like a, yeah, like a flower. Come up five. They can grow very tall Coming as up well. Five. Okay, they can go away. Welcome back, Kara. Thank you. Did you guys see some exciting stuff while I was gone? Well, we conducted the test of the Atalanta's oh. you know, video capacity. Gotcha. And we're just getting started now. Yeah. And there's a How was the ship to shore? It was great. <laughs> Wonderful um, oceanography high school class. Nice. Well, that's interesting, an oceanography high school Yeah, class. isn't that that's so nice. cool? Yeah. I wish I had oceanography in high school. Room. I didn't know they taught it in high school. That's I wish. Oh. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that they're starting to put that into to high school. Yeah. And we would love to have a look at any one of the whips. Uh, we need to move. Okay, okay. I'm going to get run over here. Yeah, we continue to see. On board the ship, there's a fairly constant schedule of ship-to-shore interactions that are run by the team. Yes. And they've invited, you know, the, the scientists and others no. to be part of those. I haven't. Gonna be I would love to sign up too. for yes, some of those. Yeah, we would love to it's have. It's fun to do. Yeah, diverse group sharing their experiences. Uh, with if the you students. stop the ship now, yep, it's and that's just direct you know, connection right days. into classrooms. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a lovely sponge. I think this was on our priority list for collection. This floating. Sponge? Yes, that's a stocked sponge. Yeah. Oh, I think you're right. We might as well stop him up. All right. Yeah, I think you're right. So, Kara, if people were interested in scheduling a ship to shore, they would just go on the website, correct? Yes, yeah, so um, if you are a teacher or yes. a community group organizer, um, it doesn't have to be a formal teacher in um, a school. Uh, any group can sign up. All you have to do is go to nautiluslive.org, um, and there's a whole page on ship-to-shore interactions. They're usually about 30 minutes. 
Um, and you can let us know as well if there's particular things you want your class or your group to learn about, like um, the ROVs or you know biology or um, certain careers, and we can try to accommodate that. So you can feel free. There's a Google form link on our website, and you can enter that uh, request. And we'll uh, work with our scheduler to schedule you in. Um, since we are a 24-hour operation, no matter where you are in the world or what time zone you are in, uh, just let us know what time works for you, and we'll try to fit that into the schedule. Uh, if not during our expedition in the month of September, there will be more expeditions into December. So um, if this is not a great time for your class, feel free to sign up also for an interaction on the coming expeditions during October, November, and December. What an awesome resource. Yeah. So it looks like we're oh, getting a, sponge right there. a bit more rocky as we move up to our waypoint two. Yep, we're going uphill. You're gonna have to keep coming up. Do you recognize that? Thing? Yeah. I couldn't pick it out. I thought it looked familiar from the target list. Yeah, sorry, I got a little carried away here moving the ship. So I know, uh, that's no worries. Yeah. I'll let uh, Atlanta swing in, and we'll do some shorter moves where we can uh, take samples. I thought it was going to be boring mud for a while. Yeah, so that stocked sponge uh, looks like that it's present on our uh, priority list for sampling. That is yep. a stocked euclid uh, have to maintain that Probably there. Uh, in the genus Polysema. Mm. Bolosoma, sorry, I mispronounced it, Bolosoma. You the genus Bolosoma. Almost have to be coming up the whole time and we're going Yeah, we'll have our choice of just a nice yes. grapefruit sized angular rock at the beginning yes. of the dive as exactly. per as per plan. Uh and we are also on the lookout for a specific kind of bamboo corals which are sparsely branched. So if you see those though we would love to collect them as well. Yeah, I'm I'm a bit I think the taller whips are probably bamboo corals. I'm not sure we have to have a closer look at them. Yeah, we do. And uh, Atlantis slowing down here at the oh end yeah, of that, it. Oh, so yes. Abs that's absolutely perfect. We've stopped the ship. So it's perfect. Zoom in there. Yeah, just zoom in. No, this doesn't look like a bamboo coral. This, or does it? No, I don't see the. Do you see the nodes? I don't see the nodes. No, I don't see any nodes. nodes. But let the media come into full. The polyps are so dense; it's kind of hard to even see the axis of the skeleton if there were. Is it one of the primnoid whips? I'm mm. not very familiar with them because. Uh, oh yes, it is on a rock. I okay. think it is a primnoid web. This is not a sea pen. The smaller webs that we were seeing were definitely sea pens. I would go with primnoid web because I don't see the uh, quintessential black and white stripes that would be present on the bamboo corals. Okay. That's okay. a great zoom. Thank you Good. so much. Can you guys talk about how um, items get on the priority list and what what we what we do with them after we collect them and how people use them? 
Yeah, absolutely. We love them and pet them. Absolutely. <laughs> so, when, uh, what was that? I think this is. <laughs> I am ready. So now we've talked about, uh, I was just talking to Taylor Ann earlier today, we only take what we need. Yes. We this looks more everything. like a bamboo coral, right? The, I see the white base. Let's be Go ahead, Jaina. There's a beautiful um, acting area tucked underneath as well. Uh, mm. No. No, 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 no. This is, again, it's a better view, though, so yeah. we could get that confirmation. Primnoid whip. But yes, uh, Mia, I think that was you talking. I don't know. I haven't learned everybody's voices yet. <laughs> or was that Jaina? Uh, yeah, so apparently Jaina's dad thought I was her. Oh, so. what? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess our voices are similar. Yeah, he was like, and also you voices have get such a good eye. Over, mm, yeah. uh, when I was oh, pointing out all those starfish, uh, sea okay, stars. Okay, go in. Wow. There's a beautiful uh, acting area tucked underneath the rock. <laughs> oh, that's and right. Thank you. The beautiful primnoid fans. And we do want to collect a rock here as well, right? At the start of the dive, that's part of the dive plan instruction. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll find a nice angular, smallish uh, rock. There's a limit on the number of samples, you know, as per the, the permit. And I know that the, uh, it's my understanding anyway, that, you know, the priorities, the uh, meet the objectives of the mission and are discussed beforehand in terms of what's best to identify the geology and the biology species, the ones that are most understudied, the least known, the most useful for gaining an understanding of this special place, ultimately for its protections. Exactly. So, uh, that said, how we should get a rock with a coral on it. Uh, given how dense the polyps were on that uh, whip, I would suggest uh, the probable ID of the genus uh, Narella. It's a primnoid whip. But was that a that tiny, tiny correct. sea star? Yeah. Right. Oh, right Mia has a stick. <laughs> Mia's using the stick. <laughs> <laughs> Teeny tiny sea star. <laughs> Is that an angular rock? Yeah, on the angular rock that looks like one of the Goniaster sea stars. I'm going to give it uh, seven points of the stick before Dan takes it away. <laughs> <laughs> so Why do I feel Mia like there's <laughs> soon going to be a situation that somebody's going to be cheesed with that stick? <laughs> That's a big coral on that, that rock. That is so. a oh, yeah, it's very mm -hmm. big primnoid fan. Uh, those smaller curved whips on the sea floor, they look like they appear to be uh, the Balticina, formerly uh, known, uh, formerly in the genus Halipteris. <laughs> I think a lot of people uh, are more familiar with that name, but that has been declassified into the genus Balticina, rather the genus Balticina has been resurrected uh, and so we see primnoid fans, primnoid uh, whips probably in the genus Narella. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, then we have the sea pens, we saw a beautiful umbilula or umbilula like colony. Uh, we saw the we saw the stocked uh, euplectelids in the genus Bolosoma, and we would love to collect one of those when it's possible. And we are also hoping to collect a uh, angular rock. Yeah, and I also did see a little shrimp. Shrimp, uh, that yes. We, I think is also on our priority list um, if it's associated with sponges. Um, but I did, was the shrimp associated with the sponge? Uh, no, not the one that I saw. It wasn't yeah. actually near the base of a coral. Exactly. But just want to remind us that that's on also the list Also seen too, on sponge, exactly. Since we are looking at sponges to yeah. keep an eye out for those little I guys. I think that was a nematocarcinus sponge. Shrimps. The red ones. And it's, it's a nematocarcinus sponge. Yeah, it's amazing how the primnoid have 
Primnoids have found the uh, sparsely distributed rocks and have grown just on the rocks because they need harder soft surfaces yeah. and they cannot grow in the soft sediment. Whereas whenever it's a soft sediment, you're seeing the sea pens. And that's yeah. a good way to differentiate between mm -hmm. them because sea pens are mostly, largely except for one group, uh, soft sediment octocorals, whereas the rest of them require more harder surfaces. It's quite impressive that these primnoids are able to grow to these sizes exactly. on these small, fractured, tiny rocks. Tiny rocks. Exactly. rocks. Sometimes yeah. we see there must not be much movement going on yeah. here over time. Or, I, Yeah, that's interesting. Right, right, not a lot of sediment transport to cover exactly. them up, to allow them to grow right next to the mudline. And I thought I'd previously seen a uh, fish. I'm not sure about the ID. It was quite far away, but probably, uh, yeah. It looks like There's right a couple there. tiny no? ones. Yeah. Yeah. And so we saw the sea cucumber and that was a spiky looking sea cucumber. Yes. So yeah. that would an ID be on that guy. Yes, that there's the, the sponge, list? yes. Sponge? The bolosoma. And uh the sea cucumber is I just lost it. Yes. Is Crop that the sponge you needed sampled? Yes. Maybe near in, in rock? Is there a two for one, maybe? Uh, that's a big rock. Yeah. <laughs> big rock. Unless it's on a small one, we can't really tell. Yeah. The sea, cu the sea cucumber was a cyanolactic sea cucumber, the one that we saw, and mm -hmm. probably the first actual uh, sea cucumber. But this is on the species sampling list, this sponge. <laughs> Let's Come be sure uh, before we take down. it. Yes, it is a bolosoma, and Don't we have the bolosomas <laughs> in the list. Already ahead of you. Should we sample it? We can if uh, the pilots think that it is a good position to sample. And we don't have this, and so we carefully take just one. Uh, come down another five. It's bigger than I thought. Uh, do we need the whole sponge or we can subsample it, I think. I don't know. Yeah, um, we should not need to take the whole sample. Exactly. What a shock. Especially since this is the first we've seen, um, we should refrain from taking the whole thing. Yes, we can take a subsample. Seen like three of these guys, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Uh, the rule is to see at least 10 before taking a whole yes. organism. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, good. Yeah. Should we wait and see more? Mm. Or are we okay to take a portion? We can take a portion of it, we um, portion. but we could also just wait to get a count if we wanted to take the whole organism. I don't um, think, I don't think we need to for the, the purposes organism, of the genetics. Exactly. Yeah. If it's I don't the think we need the whole thing. Though. No. Yeah. Yes. Select, uh, so I think we'll be all right with just this is a beautiful a shot snip of the and slurp sponge. Here, I'll do this. And you can see the silicious spicules oh, on them, which it. makes them the right glass there. sponges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are beautiful. Yeah, we could get away with a, a snip and a, a slurp. I think that would probably be the best That's course the of action. Method, then, is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <You laughs> technical terminology. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, and it's floaty, so it'll be nice to have it in its own slurp jar. Uh, you want to sample it? So like yes, yeah, snip and a slurp. It's beautiful now, sample it. Roger. <laughs> we don't need the whole thing. It is very beautiful. Yes, it's probably a little uh, jelly fish or something. It's too far to for me. Um, um, I don't know if I can. Let me see something here. It might not be. Uh, might be a little too close to the camera for manipulator action there. 
And just a note to any viewers, um, Prashana mentioned spicules. So uh, spicules to are do little that, you would pick, um, uh, silicon dioxide shards or pretty much glass shards eight. that help give this sponge and some structure um, so it doesn't yeah. just collapse even though it's an invertebrate, meaning it has no spine. And a pretty interesting thing is um, different sponges yeah, will I'm have go back to different kinds of spicules. Dive, um, and that's one uh, way that we can actually help ID sponges. We can uh, look at so them under the microscope again, and they will have again. like different Your kind of, like, hook shapes or anchor shapes. Until or you pick a new like a destination and you can so bang sources cool all day long and they don't care. Spicules. Is this comment identifying the sponge Do you want to see the not the sponge? Yeah, so we had a comment sure. come in that is um, suggesting that um, the sponge that we're looking at is a callophagus sponge um, and not Olasoma, if that helps you at all, Upashana. Uh, can you spell that out? Then maybe we can check. Uh, sure, that's C-A-L-O-P-H-A-C-U-S. So, uh, sorry, we still do want to sample it or uh, no? Stand by for a Stand second. By Stand by. by. Second. Zoom in again if you want. Zoom in. And they were also Two mentioning holes, it is not a bolesoma, B O L E S O M A. It won't look like that when wow, it the comes detail up on that video is amazing. Look more like a wet mop. Mm. It's all ecosystem inside there, isn't it? Yeah. And we have some additional sponge advice. <laughs> Good. Um, uh, referencing the NOAA Okeanos Animal Guide. If you want to check that out, there's lots of different um, pictures there that can help you ID things. And uh, there's this reference to a particular stocked sponge there. Yeah, since uh, there's a slight uh, confusion regarding the ID we can uh, okay so we uh, okay people in the chat they want to have a look at the backside of the sponge to get more confirmation uh, because uh, there's a slight bit of uh, confusion regarding the ID and if there's confusion then we would w like to hold off the collection unless we are sure about the ID. So uh, you can send out the brow cam to the peeps in the chat and it's actually looking at the back side of the oh sponge. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it right there. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> My dad just texted me saying this is really cool to watch so shout out to Chris Cooperie's Westling out in <laughs> Texas. 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 <laughs> uh, Asako suggests that it is in the family Bolosomene, and uh, we have been uh, looking at the Benthic Animal Guide. Uh, from what I'm not as we are not sponge experts, but it looks like the Euplectelid stalks have a more uh, vase-like structure and a more hollow 
from the top, whereas the rosellids have. Uh, yes, so Steve uh, on the chat, Steve Oskovich, he also thinks it's uh, in the family Bolosomini, so which is in our list of sampling. So, what do the rest of you guys think about this? That was my, yeah, original thought, but also not a sponge expert. So, um, but yes, looking at the Rosa Lide stalk sponges, they just look completely different. Um, and yeah, kind of have that opening towards the back. Back, yeah, the Rosa um, seem more closed and rounder from the front. And then, yeah, yeah. So what should, what shall we do? Shall we go ahead and sample this? We have some uh, confirmation from the science chat as well that yeah. it is probably a bolusomini, the one which is on our list. As an archaeologist, I would say that if we're reasonably certain, and I'll leave, I'll defer to you, then um, uh, we we'll could snip a portion, but we need to be, you know, reasonably certain. Exactly. Uh, Taylor. Yeah, so I, my suggestion would be to continue exploring. Okay. Um, and okay. just wait until we get further confirmation. Mm -hmm. okay. Wait till we have certainty? Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank then you. No sample. Uh, yes, so we are right. not going to sample right now unless we have uh, more confirmation. Since we are on a 20 hour dive and we have limited space, we want to make sure that the samples yes. we are collecting and are. And also, the ones we don't want to collect something that we, are uh, actually that we have a lot for. of samples yeah. of. Yeah, the structure looks euclectelid, definitely to me. We can move on? Yes, we can. We're ready to go. All right. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. Are you ready for me to... Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm going to ask. Back up. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to say Not that even um, close. the camera on her is really great, and all the angles that we can see, as someone who's had to do ID in way less ideal One spit in conditions. Place, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we kinda yeah, the zoom is yeah, so yeah. amazing. You know what we did wrong there. Yeah. I'm wondering if sponges are harder to ideal so because the they're the asymmetrical, of the dive. whereas like so other animals kind of follow it's kind of a bilateral symmetry like humans, yeah. but sponges can kind of grow kind of in weird shapes, right? Yeah, some of the stuff mm. sponges yeah. that happen. 2181 uh, was there. Touchdown. And if this is helpful at all, Upashana, mm -hmm. um, we had another comment saying it might be mm -hmm. a Sacco calyx. Yes. Okay. That was my yes. bad, by the way. I was that anxious to get out of the mud. Think I, I saw mud and my eyes immediately glazed over. <laughs> and we just had a shout out from um, yeah, three science teachers talent. watching from Florida. So thanks for tuning in. We're so glad you're exploring with us. Um, we were just looking at a sponge, and uh, there's lots of sponges also in the waters of Florida. They're very important for filtering the water. Uh, they act as habitat for things that might live inside them, like little shrimps might live inside the sponge pores, like a little shrimp condominium. And uh, they're very fascinating creatures. They are technically animals, um, but they just, they look <laughs> like plants, but they are animals. Um, and they uh, have lots of different kinds of cells inside them. So some of those cells help create a current to bring in the water uh, so they can get all the yummy little particles in there. Some of the cells provide more like structure and some of them are undifferentiated still, meaning they still have yet to kind of define themselves into a particular job. Uh, so sponges are super adaptable. Um, a lot of times, not sure about deep sea sponges, but at least our shallow water sponges in Florida, you can uh, kind of break them into pieces and they can uh, regrow themselves into multiple Been smaller sponges. Here. I've heard before, it's the only animal you can put into a a uh, blender <laughs> and it will still survive. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> well, good good to know if we do <laughs> sample one that it will grow back. Yeah, those are looking a little roundish, those rocks. I think yeah. Val likes a 
wedge-shaped rock about grapefruit size, but those aren't looking so angular or wedge-shaped. Buster, duster, duster. And again, for our viewers, if you want some clarification, I was just asking um, Val, our geologist on board, why we are trying to collect angular rocks. And she said that um, it's more likely that they uh, form through um, like volcanic activity. They're more likely to be igneous yes, rocks that they're searching for, as opposed to some of the rounder rock, uh, rocks. It's interesting uh, fish is that, on is the... that a fish on the Atalanta oh, camp? I see that yeah. fish. Atalanta. Let me spin around a little bit. Muted. Yeah, that looks like one of the macro urids that we were seeing yesterday. Ooh, little sea star or brittle star down there? So yes, that's the probably a <laughs> sea star and the stick has come up. You better <laughs> choose wisely with that stick. Uh, I mean. For those wondering, the reason Mia has a stick is <laughs> that the screens in front of us all have anti-glare features, so a laser pointer would not work. <laughs> but uh, we've discovered we have a new expert on spotting sea stars. So. I mean, I'm and not they're a little far hence, away, so hence Mia the stick. is like. By expert, I mean I just get excited when I see them. I don't really know any names or. This but is, you this have. This is how it starts, Mia. Yeah, and you <laughs> become an expert at spotting them. Yeah. <laughs> The you next like time you're aboard Nautilus, you won't be the navigator. You'll be the like sea star <laughs> spotter <laughs> <water. laughs> expert. <laughs> I'm liking this rock right here in front of me. Oh, yeah. The one next to the sea star? <laughs> 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 Did Mia get to have a look at the sea star? Let me try and ID that. Yeah, he's moving a lot, too. Uh, we need a rock, people. Is it looking angular yeah. to you? Is it too big? No. Well, you don't know until you try and pick it up. Yeah. It's got a lot of angles. Let's do it. Mm. We need some ballast. Let's see if it's angular, if it's suitable. If not, we'll continue. <coughs> it's not too big. Yeah, we ballasted late just for rocks. Um, the sea star that we're seeing might be um, a Zoroaster species from uh, Zoroaster Day. Zoroaster Day. Yeah, I meant to print out a list of, of the different sea stars so I could have them in that front looks of heavy. me. There's so many. You would have a that's yeah whole book full. Yeah, that's a very that's we a want grapefruit big. sized. Yeah. That's yeah. Smaller uh, please. What about the one right next to it? Uh kinda in the corner? Looks or what <laughs> about like one of those where the laser pointers are? More towards the center of the screen, are the two well, small? They're not so angular. Not yeah, so angular. I'm not seeing Which any angular rocks. Angular? This one? I need what ballast. about I this need one? Mm. Is that angular enough? Mm. I guess we can't tell unless we zoom or pick yeah. it up and look, but it's uh, kind of covered in sediment. Um. Hmm, might be more challenging to get a rock than you think. Maybe these are not sitting on top of Yeah, the maybe that's why the corals are able to Yeah, I think it's a lot on of them. sediment on the attached rock. That little one right there might be angular. It's just not loose, is it? Yeah. Ooh, I saw it move. The one on the bottom looks, I don't know, like has a lot of nodules or something. Ooh, nice. It was uh, too flat. Too flat. The other one was the one I was actually going for. Mm. <coughs> it 
the sea star is claiming its rock, so we don't take it. Yeah. No, we don't take that one. We don't want to disturb it. Oh, I see. Yeah. That one, that might be... Such a cool angle coming from Atalanta, just seeing the oh, manipulator come out. Yeah. We'll make another Marvel uh, reference. Looks like Doc Ock. <laughs> it does. You want this in the sample tray in Starboard, or you want this in the tool? No, well, first we got to uh. decide if it's... Angular and grapefruity and <laughs> all the all those things. all the requirements. Looks a little round. Looking roundish. They all look roundish. The star is moving pretty fast. Yeah. Oh, it's got that one big face. Yeah. And as the sediment kind of falls off, it looks like it has some nooks and crannies, maybe? I don't know, but it's got that flat face and that, that wedge shape. There's that wedge shape. <laughs> <laughs> shake it off, shake it off. Give it a nice spin. Oh! oh. <laughs> I would call that a smallish wedge-shaped rock. rock. You want to get that, Dan? I don't think that rock wants to come come home. That has, uh, yes, that rock has given its verdict. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that rock wants to come with us. And that well, season well, starts tomorrow. We can't fumble yet. Oh, look, it looks angular there. Look yeah, it does angle. look yeah. very angular there. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Oh, I think it's suitable. Yeah. All right. It's prepped for sampling. It has some nice color on it, too. Okay. I think it's suitable. You're happy, happy? It's part of the mission plan. I'm here, it's suitable. I'm putting it in the box. That'll be a uh, starboard box. Starboard box coming out. And I want to save the front for... Generally, we save the front for biology, but... Hard to do with a ship full of geologists. <laughs> Sample trays out. Swap the cameras for me. Swapping cameras. Mia, you can't use that stick for rocks. That is a stick only for sea stars. Okay. <laughs> if you want to point out rocks, you need another stick. What about nudibranchs or things that are in that category? Those are different sticks. Family. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the sea star gradually moving. I know, it's coming towards me. <laughs> Here's my voice. <laughs> sea star whisper. All right. All right, and that is sample zero two one. Zero two one? Yes. And that went into starboard box A, correct? Correct. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. I think it's A. I don't know. I can't see the letters on that. Should probably put a note in the log to redo our. You want me to come back out? What's that? You want me to come back out so you can see it? No. I know which physically which box is it. Sample chain. <laughs> Port rail cam back on. Thank Just you. to confirm, Taylor, and those zero two one. Yes. Okay. And we're at a depth of two one two five. Yeah. Oh, very different so far from King George Seamount. Yes. So, Elsie, can I ask, yesterday you were helping to process samples, right? Yes. Did you process any rock samples, like 
Um, I heard Val said she was going to be using a rock saw. Um, what happened to the samples from yesterday? Right, so we took a couple of um, different samples from our last dive, and that included biological samples like corals uh, and other creatures, um, rocks up, for the purpose second. of geological surveys and we also uh, collected seawater and what we call the Niskin bottles um, so I actually helped with the processing of those samples oh. and um, we process them for eDNA sampling so what we do is we collect the water from the Niskin bottles and run them through filters mm -hmm. and then they will analyze the filters to see what DNA was captured on that and that gives us a good idea of what kind of what kind of life um, was in uh, in that water where we uh, sampled the water. And that's sort of a way of um, doing a assessment I of mean, what is living there without ab having move. to actually <laughs> see the creature. Um, so oh, that was what I mainly helped with. Stopping here. Oh. Very cool. So it sounds like Let's a very special filter to capture move. DNA on it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Start out and slow um, the rock sampling, I believe, or I um, was gonna be flat. Uh, Val and Hannah actually uh, yes, processed yeah, we're going, those rock samples that we collected. Here, so Hopefully we'll on uh, slow, maybe so on one of their there, so. watches, they would be able to talk a little bit about um, how they processed it and what they're going to be using them for, if they haven't already. Right, yeah, very cool. So uh, hopefully Val can give us an update on the next next watch. Yeah, yeah. the uh, white sponge that we are seeing right in front of us is uh, another euplectelid, but this one is uh, the genus Sacrocalyx. It's a beautiful glass sponge. You can see the structures and the details of it. The stock sponges look a little bit like nice flowers on the bottom. They do. Yeah. They're Beautiful. stopping and smelling the roses. <laughs> yeah. Quite tall. Something pink on the bottom. Uh, that looks like probably a shrimp that's stuffed underneath it. Oh, I do see it. Or something else. Yeah. No, it's a oaf. Ophuroid, Ophuroid, yeah. I see the arms now. Yeah. That's a beautiful angle of the sponge. That's a beautiful image. The Ophuroid, the, spo the light reflecting on yeah. the sponge and the primnoids, both the stalks in the background and the fans, the Calyptrophora fans. That's beautiful. This is what is interesting, that the last dive was also on a sea mound. This is another sea mound. And generally, one can think that, oh, it is going to be similar uh, organisms that we'll be seeing on both the sea mounds. How different can it be? But when you get down there, you see that the complete assemblage of organisms that we are seeing at the start of the dive are very different from what we saw across the whole of our first dive. Right, so far, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was zero sediment for the majority of our dive on that former seamount. Exactly. Until we got to the top. Exactly. And there I don't think we're going to make it to the top of this one, though, are we? I think the... <laughs> no, not, not, not on our dive. watch. <laughs> well, not on our watch. Is that the plan for the whole <laughs> dive, though, to go to the top? Or um, yeah, so there, there are a number of yeah. points. Yeah. What is that Oh, that's a sea thing? cucumber. Oh, oh look, it's I so see purple. the color. It's the wow. sea cucumber. That's beautiful. So purple. Again, you're rede we're redeeming ourselves for the <laughs> last time. Yeah, I would say another uh, cyanac. Zoom in there, man. To look yeah, <laughs> I can't speak <laughs> again. Cyanac. That's twice, Dan. Twice, yeah. Well. Uh, Sea cucumber, but it's I okay will check. 
Wow, look at that. Yeah, the I was going to go with the sign elected. So it's a little tight there. So vibrant. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if these sea creatures, when they first experience in, light, say, oh my god, I'm purple. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope we come up on like those and if you see and if they start the swimming, down, it's and beautiful to watch. Oh, yeah. This one can swim? Not this one. Okay. Another one. <laughs> they can probably float up a bit, but they have, it's like a little uh, skirt no, around their mouth. Up. So when they swim, it's, a, it's beautiful to watch. Did you say trip newsties? Anipnusties. Anipnusties. Oh. That's how I pronounce it. I'm not the best at pronouncing um, the different. Pull back just a little bit and get the whole animal. Bigger there. That at it than I am. <laughs> I have to think about it a couple <laughs> of times. <laughs> Mess it up, fumble it, and then. Is this again, also a holotheria? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's a holotherian. It's a sea cucumber. So, in the same phylum as the sea stars, the ophiroids, the crinoids, the basket stars. All the cute things? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's in the phylum Echinodermata, but in a different class, in the class Holothuroidea. Okay. And it's amazing that even within a phylum, we see such diversity yeah. when it comes to good. external morphology. Yeah, Echinodermata, I believe, refers to echino, meaning spiny. And dermata meaning skin, like dermatology. So, um, makes sense for sea urchins, especially, to be in a kind of dermata. But oh, we also see spiky sea stars and um, the internal structure of sea cucumbers can also reference that spiky, spiny skin. Hmm. We're actually about done with this ship movement. Sure. Two thousand one hundred thirteen meters. We've come up. 60 or 70 meters so far. Someone in the comments said that <coughs> they noticed um, two small tripod fish. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. he saw yeah. them too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, they were swimming, so we didn't So the tripod a fish are, have their longer, I, I don't know if they're fins, but right. they rested on the ground, yeah. just like a tripod. Yeah, <laughs> they have modified fins so that uh, they can kind of like walk on the sediment, I guess, instead of swimming. It's pretty cool. They seem to favor the uh, silty side soft on their feet yeah yeah so the sea cucumbers told us they were here before we even saw them we started seeing that bioturbation or yes. the oh. yeah. the little squigglies that you can kind of see here the in the patterns sediment on the sediment like you yeah. see that means they have oh feed yeah. feeding on the sediment mm -hmm. yeah so they feed uh, on the sediments and then take out all the nutrient from it and then poop out the sediments again and if we see that those patterns they generally represent that sea cucumbers are present in this area. Yeah, yeah. Are they feeding the, the bacterial mat or the little critters in within the sediment? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because it has uh, not just critters; it has a lot of organic material that's settling in the sediment. Right. So they're so deposit they're feeders. They're deposit feeders, deposit not scavengers. Not scavengers. Deposit feeders. So they take the sediment and take out all the organic material that's present in it. Yeah. Do you think an accurate analogy would be like sea cucumbers are the earthworms of the sea, kind of like eating those things in the soil? <coughs> huh. Depends. I can see the comparison. With yeah. A, a, we, there are like uh, deep sea worms, though. There are. Exactly. Right. So yeah. not like uh, deep sea worms, especially the, yeah. there's like predatory deep sea wor or predatory worms in the sea. But, but yeah, I can definitely analogous see that. to the land yeah. earthworm, I guess. Yeah, definitely stirring up that that bottom sediment. It's amazing that 
creatures can find resources to eat uh, and just the sediment. We have just over uh, 10 meters left in this movement. All right. I think we can uh, keep moving. Alrighty. What's that? There's like a red pink thing down there. See it? Yeah. Should have got my stick out. Yeah. I got a bunch of mud on the port, so it's gonna be annoying for a while. Okay, Jenna, zoom in there, please. It looks it's like it's another an actin area from a distance. Yes. Give me some light too. It's an actin area. Is it one of the Corallimorph areas? No, I don't see the white at the end. And there's a smaller purple thing. Yes, next to that's it. a small recruit of uh, Anthomastis or Pseudoanthomastis. Oh, the little purple one mm -hmm. in yeah. the rock there? Yes. On top of the rock. Settle on the rock, and we have a nice sea anemone. Okay. We are still continuing to see the uh, primnoid webs, the narella, and the fans, the calitrophora. Not many fish. No, not a lot of fishes. We only have uh, 30 minutes left in our watch. The shrimp? Only 30 minutes left? Yeah. Oh, it's almost 3.30. I know. <laughs> yeah. The short watch, we made the descent. Yeah. Yes. That took some time. Mm -hmm. It looks like a bunch of ophiroids on the primnoid fan. Do I right uh, snap it in there? Jane? Tough time waking up. Mm -hmm. My alarm went off. I thought the phone was ringing in my dream. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hans. That's Come to the control room. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, I've been uh, having a hard time waking up also, setting my <laughs> alarms for 11 a.m. instead of p.m. Oh, oh, oh. oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Don't let go! Me getting out of my bunk <laughs> for this shift. <laughs> <laughs> Falling off your bunk. Falling off the top yeah, bunk. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm I bunk. I've done that actually, you know, in yeah. a previous cruise, <laughs> where somehow, like, I mean, yeah. I was in the upper bunk okay, and there was a fire work. drill. Oh and, no. I, and I had long shifts and I'd just come in to sleep and I did not realize, I completely forgot that I was in the upper bunk and oh. I'd just fallen oh off the bunk like God. that. Oh. I'm glad you are okay. <laughs> Those oh guys tend geez. to jump off when we get close, so I don't know why. Oh, a crinoid, the first yeah. one on this dive. No, I've seen those want. brittle stars do that behavior before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fall off? Yeah. Or they just, just jump off? Jump off. I think they get scared by the light and probably... Vibrations probably. But, uh, yeah. They can sense the light? The, the energy, like the yeah. heat from the light. Oh, the maybe. Vibrations oh, of the ROV. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do the same thing if I got disturbed at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> jump in big light. Yeah. <laughs> jump away. Get out of the house. Don't bite. Let me sleep. It looks like Vecna from... Uh, oh. Jacob always has things. the pop culture references. <laughs> 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 but it does. It does. Okay. can go away.
that looks like another Anthomastis yeah. and probably our first Paragorgia on the left. On the far left? Yes, between the two fans, between the two primnoid fans. Here? Or it can be something else, but definitely a first observation on this dive. And we've seen this before. Yes, that's the umbilula yeah. sea pan. I love those. I'm so jealous you guys have a little marker up there. <laughs> you have your stick. <laughs> if you had the marker, it would She'd just go be crazy with, with it. Yeah. 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 I'd be making little NFL plays like ESPN. <laughs> it, it looks like a okay. pyrogorgia with a bunch of ophiroids on it. Zoom in. Or... Yes, that looks like no, a sculpture. And it is yeah. overgrown so by zoanthids. So the darker pink uh, coral that we see, uh, that is the main uh, coral stock in the coral colony, which would be the Paragorgia or no, the bubblegum right coral, so which has right been so overgrown by the yellow um, zoanthids. Yeah, I'm behind and the curve then now. we have a big ophiroid with very long arms sitting on the fan. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. That's a beautiful close-up. And we have an umbrella in the front. Anthomastis in the background, a bunch of halipters, whips, the primnoid whips. There's so much of diversity in this one frame itself. Yeah. So anyone uh, bashing the button on that stills camera? Or? I can hardly yeah. hear you, Dan. <laughs> Is anyone bashing the button on the stills camera? Uh, I can. Uh, I have it set up and focused, um, yeah, ready mm -hmm. to go. But it's not set up on science computer over here because um, I have to switch my, com my computer uh, over to take captures and observations. Maybe we can give computers. it to Hans. Sure. Yeah, maybe yeah. we can set it up on that uh, computer. Yeah, I'll take a pause really quick Ooh, of observations. C -star. C -star. Set that up. And there's a point out. So this is <laughs> probably <laughs> another uh, bubblegum coral Paragorgia uh, colony, and there's a sea star. I'm quite sure we saw it yesterday. Uh, looks like in the family Oniasterid. I'm going to confirm though. So I notice a lot of these things are kind of pink and purple. Do you think that's uh, from the environment? That they're similar colors? Besides that, you know, we had that bright purple sea cucumber. Uh, are you talking about the corals, Mia, or yeah, in general? Yeah, in general, all the things. In general, the colors? Yeah, we've seen like the different things we've pointed lot, out. Yeah, A lot, yeah, that's true. And so generally blue and anything in the shade of blue is very expensive mm -hmm. biochemically. So uh, we rarely see uh, the color blue in nature. We don't see person. that that often. Yep. You see, yes, uh, green okay. comes from... Uh, pigments that are related. Oh, that's beautiful close up. So pink, red, uh, I'm not exactly sure why we see a lot in that shade. Uh, but I guess, again, these are all related to the different biochemical compounds that are present in the tissue and the different functions that they have. So green would not be a necessity here because it is related to pigments, which are which play an important function in uh, photosynthesis, say, for example, but we do have green or in the terrestrial uh, organisms because there's a camouflaging factor blending in with your surrounding etc mm -hmm. so uh, and there's a crinoid tucked under the yeah, rock as that. well yeah so okay. uh, it can be a byproduct of the chemical compounds which are found in these organisms uh, that is my best guess that's a beautiful close-up. Sorry? Yes, I think that's a goniasterid. Sea star. I think your uh, camera's off, or your mic's off. Okay, you can go in. Uh, we did collect a goniasterid yesterday, oh, not okay. this one, though. That's better, Hans. Uh, I can hear you now. We've so got we one can then. 
Uh, yes, you can read a little bit. Yeah, I was asking if that was a Gonias teridae, and I was feeling pretty good about my, my yes. biological uh, knowledge there. <laughs> but we've got one. This is a very good thing that you have set up, the, that she has set up the camera, the stills yeah. camera. Yeah. All right, yeah, thanks, Dan. So Taylor Ann set me up with the stills cam. And if you uh, <coughs> want me to line up shots or anything to shout out, I got a uh, preview up here as well. You have to uh, kind of hold the button down for a second or so. Right. And you'll see in the top right that it actually recorded and transferred the picture. That Another sponge. Another sponge. Yeah. Can we have a look at the back of the sponge real quick? The back of? The one where the stalk and the head, uh, the, the right. stalk joins the head. If possible. Yeah, possible with our brow cam, but not with the main camera. Okay. Oh, I will. I can maybe get a side shot. It's on, you know, it's on a steep hill there, so we have this uh, annoying. It's fine. It's fine. We can. <coughs> move on Dust and have a look at another. Yes, we can have a look vehicle. at them later uh, on the dive as well. I'm just going to come up for a minute and see if I can. And a uh, quick up question off. for you, Apostana, if you are available. Um, we have someone here who says, they're a tunicate fan. Um, I'm also a tunicate fan. <laughs> if you're not sure what tunicate is, it's uh, basically a filter feeding organism. Um, some people call them sea squirts sometimes because they have two siphons. One siphon brings in water um, to, into their digestive system and then one siphon uh, releases that water. So is there a possibility of seeing tunicates in the deep sea? Yes, we have previously definitely seen uh, tunicates, even the stocked tunicates, uh, but they are not uh, very common, but we we have seen them. So there is a possibility. Yeah. <laughs> a non-zero mm. chance, as Hans yes, would say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the car wash. Thank you. <laughs> Anything's possible. Hope dies last, as Daniel says. <laughs> I love all the marine oh. snow, you know, random what little things you've seen. Basically from the Antarctic. This is what happens when you land in the mud. So. Yeah. That's uh, yes, house the cleaning to do. The last sponge that we saw, the one that we were trying to have a closer look at, that seemed more like a rosellid because the front was more rounded. And uh, I saw in the chat that Steve also chimed in that it, this one is uh, the colophicus, which is a rosellid. We were looking at the So not our target. I'm going to no. come back down and come under. You're okay. right. That's why I wanted to have a look at the i got to get uh, like Western with it to get some of the Behind the head part of the sponge, if I may say so. Um, I'm going to stay on this heading, wait for you to come. That was yeah, a good I, way to. I yes. came back down the hill a little, so. Oh, we'll see a, a fish. fish in that. When we uh, come up the hill. As long as I'm moving forward, you won't see all that uh, debris on the vehicle coming off. But it's when we turn, it gets... Our tether's coming down, want me to, uh, our delta, want me to pay out a little bit? No, I'm going to come up underneath you. Yeah. Sounds good. I want a high delta as I come underneath you there. <laughs> oh, 
Oh not yes, exactly. Uh, the port previously, I was talking the about the colors in corals, and Steve mentioned that there is a uh, green-colored primnoid, the Thorella viridis, which is found in the Antarctic. So that oh. is a. a I did not know about these green corals. I will definitely look them up, yes. But the name, the species name Viridus, it, it sounds it, green. It, yeah, that's <laughs> green. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and just to, did I hear that correctly? It's a green coral found in the Arctic? Antarctic. A Antarctic. Antarctic. But, wow. and, but the Antarctic is also a, it is a completely different place. You yeah. find such different uh What is that? I'm just confused. What am I looking at? Me too. Yeah. Have we seen that? What are these? Yes, there's so much of different diversity that's found uh, in the Antarctic. That is. You can push in that, a bit that there. looks a yeah. stalked hydroid, right? Yeah. That's number three. Singular Dan. stalked hydroid. I don't. Yeah, I can look up the taxonomy. Uh, Hydrozone definitely, but there's a. Solitary, yes. Wow. That is beautiful. I haven't seen them in a long while, the solitary hydrozones. And uh, if you look closer, it's like a cup like structure where, as if the tentacles are overflowing from the side. And you said this is a hydrozoan? Yes, it's a hydrozoan. It's a stocked hydrozoan, a solitary hydrozoan. That is beautiful. If you can have a closer look at the center of it, the mouth, the center of the yep. head. Go ahead, can I zoom in there a bit? Zoom in. A little bit of a wiggle. Ooh. Very delicate. I have to set the vehicle down to get a close up there. You want me to pay out a little bit? No, not while we're doing that. Uh, no, and your, yeah, no, your payout's fine. It's kind of a moving target. Uh, I. Here we go. Created a little ROV wash there. Changing my heading around the laterals reverse themselves. Yes, these. Okay, you should be able to zoom in there. Zoom in. Just trying to get downwind of them, but it's not happening. That is probably uh, in the family Corymorphidae. Uh, that's what it looks like. I think all the yes, that those are these are de that's definitely in the family Corymorphidae. Yeah. Also. If you can get a shot of just the head, that would also be a very cool picture. I don't know how that camera works. Is that different from the Harkini? It's a different camera from Harkini. Sorry, say again? Uh, Are you wanting a different angle in there? Uh, no, I think we are good. I think we are good. We can zoom if in a bit more, maybe. A different angle. I'm a Maxim. Are you a Max? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's okay. That's good. Thank you. So I think yesterday we had some uh, stylasterid uh, skeleton as a part of our samples. So the stylasterids and these are both Looks are like hydrozoans, but those are the coral-like colonial hydrozoans, but these are the solitary yeah. ones. Okay, you can go away. Thanks. That's awesome. I didn't know there were solitary hydrozoans. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. And this one's kind of anchored in like 
sediment. In the soft right? sediment, yes. Wow. Do Did you we know see what that the anchor? Before? Yeah, that all. This one also looks like uh, what I was uh, IDing as in the family bolus sub family bolusomine, another euplectelid spo stocked sponge. Do you want a close up of the sponge? Uh sure. That's possible. That would be great. Or it can, or it's the, uh, it can be the sacrocalyx as okay. well. But, but you plectelid for sure. And what is that yellow colony? That zoanthids overgrowing a star. That's good, thanks. She's look also looking at this one. Yes, I would call this a uh, bolosoma. And uh, do we want to Zoom go ahead? Pull out just a little for me, thanks. Uh, can we hold position for a minute? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, the ship's already stopped, so we're good. Uh, I think that this sponge is in the subfamily Bolosomine, but we are trying to confirm that with our uh, scientists ashore. And if we get a confirmation, then this will be a good candidate for sampling because we have that on our priority sampling uh, right. list. Okay. So I've already reached out to them and I'm waiting for a response. Okay, so Asako thinks that it is a bolosoma. So should we go ahead and sample? Sure. Taylor? Let's go for it. Okay, great. Then uh, this we recommended would earlier a slurp would be um, yes. sufficient. Yes, we don't need the whole sponge uh, like Taylor just mentioned. Just a little piece? Yes. Yeah, just a slurp of some of that tissue up there. Okay. It'll grow back. That's right. Like Thank you. Turning on bucket. Right. Yeah. You want to flush first? Uh, I already did flush. All right. But you can flush again. Doesn't hurt. I'm gonna flush again. Suction zero. Gonna change it to jar one. Dealer's choice. Yeah, it's short. Fifteen minutes left in the dead man's watch. Jar one. All right. Can't believe that it's already almost four in the morning. I think because we were uh, descending for part of during part of our watch. Piece. Your uh, mic's off. Oh. Um, any particular part you want, osculum or backside or? Um, no, it might be easier though for you to just go at it with the slurp itself, um, as of what I think Steve was saying earlier. Um, the tissue should be soft enough if you were, I don't know though, it's up to you. Um, I won't be able to get the is it too small? slurp nozzle up there and it, okay. the way um, it's bouncing yeah, just around, a little it would probably, you know, take right the there. whole thing. Yeah, you could take it's a snip from that um, area right there where you're at. Yeah. If that was a bigger sponge, I would certainly. Yeah, this is quite small now in comparison mm -hmm. to the. Yeah, let's see if they. Goes I, mean, in I, there I could the try it, Taylor, and I don't know if it'll. It, I'm not sure. It, it won't be as controlled, and. I don't know how much, you know, what'll happen. I think the whole thing would. I'm having a hard time hearing you back here. Sorry, I don't know if it's my headset or not. It's, it's, no, it's me. I, I think that if I went after it with the slurp, uh, likely the whole head of it would, you know, go yeah. into the slurp nozzle. Yeah, because it's so small. Yeah, yeah, you can try snipping it then and then slurping after. 
if that's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome, thank you. Somewhere about there, maybe. Is that enough? Well, I think that's enough. You try not to get the osculum, but... Yes. Maybe you want half the Oscar. Yep. I have to go a little bit more. Yeah, it'll just pop out. Yeah. That might do it. You all right with that? Good. Sorry, I didn't get confirmation there. Oh, yes, that looks yep. good. There we go. Okay. Can you can go in, please? Can be like structure for glass punches. How? Oh, okay. Slurp. I was gonna say how floaty is that, but we can slurp it. Forgot. Gotta love the slurp jar that comes in handy. Let me know when. Can you zoom in there a bit for us? Is that good? Yeah, it's good, thanks. Samples zero two two. Suction coming on at fifty. Uh, once it's in the jar, right. yes. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Standing by. It's uh, really annoying that nozzle is shorter than it should be. And we broke it on the last cruise and. Uh, we wound up with it in the thruster, Oof. and we cut it short, and I ordered another piece, which I think we have. If it sticks out too far, it gets full of mud. But if it's not out far enough, obviously I'm hitting the porch with the snaggle yeah. piece. Can you zoom in just a bit more for me? Yep, zoom in. I don't have any more right, but uh, you can zoom in a, a little more. Gotcha. Do it. You look right there. You look like you're right on top of it. Looks like it, yeah. Okay, yeah. now you can turn it on. Suck into 50. Mm, go for it. 75 there. I'm going for 75. I see the jar dancing now. Nice. Oh, I've seen it go up yep. in Set. the jar. Suction is zero. Yay. And that is sample zero two two. Thank you. Uh, if you haven't, you can turn suction off and rotate back to the flush jar. Yep. And we're at depth of 2094. Starboard rail, back on. Er, I do. Oh, thanks. Nicely done. 
Uh, before we move on, uh, can we have a quick zoom on the yellow whip yeah, yeah, that was yeah. uh, beside the sponge once we Go are ahead. done with all the sampling steps? And you can do a full zoom there yeah. on the, zoom on the yellow And then we're going to do a video swap after this. Okay. What? What? Uh, is it possible to zoom in a little more on the polyps? Uh, that is maximum for me. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's as close as I can get. You see the front of the porch there stuck on the rock. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, okay, I get it. Oh, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't put the porch back in though, yeah? Oh, yeah, wait, 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 wait. Good point, good point. Good catch, Jay. That's level five thinking right there. <laughs> And for those just tuning in, there was a question about what is this you white see object? A small uh, glass sponge on the rock as well. It's the white object the we just sampled is an animal, it is a type of sponge. Mm -hmm. I might be able to rotate a little closer. Yes, that looks like an acanthogorgia. At the risk of uh, um, dusting it. Okay, video swap. This definitely looks like an octocoral that everybody is confused about what it is. Uh, it can be an acanthogorgia or it can be uh, something else as well and uh, scientists sure uh, think that this is a good candidate for collection because uh, we are having difficulty IDing it so uh, these are always good candidates for collection uh, so what does what do the rest of you guys think about it yeah this isn't anything we've seen or collected thus exactly. far yeah, we um, don't have this. Yeah, we don't have this. We haven't seen this. Those are watch instructions, yes. you know, to consult scientists ashore on yeah. priority collections. Mm -hmm. So should we? And it go? seems from the scientists ashore that yes. it's yeah. Um, um, we've seen many of these. Yeah, so we are getting uh, multiple requests for collecting this. So can we go ahead uh, and collect Bye. this yellow coral? Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Jar number two. Do you want the whole? Oh uh, no, we don't need the whole. Just a uh, snip and slurp. Yes. Yes. Bucket back on. And I'm gonna reverse it. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to flush real quick? Yes. So we are almost yeah, at the end of our shift, Flushing shift but we will uh, do this collection before uh, swapping with the next team. Almost 4 a.m. here, so yes, um, we'll have these collections before the right. uh, and after that, they'll be. Uh, I'm gonna put suction back at zero. Suction at zero, Roger. Suction at zero, Samba John. To two. Uh, back row, we're gonna hand over and let. Uh, I'm gonna turn you over to the uh, highly capable Master Jake Bonnie, and his sidekick Tito. Thanks, right. Dan. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining us on this midnight to 4 a.m. watch. Uh, we saw some pretty cool stuff, and I'm sure we're going to see some more as we continue this dive uh, for the coming uh, about 16 hours or so. Um, so this is our watch signing off, and uh, see you next time yep, in a few yep. hours. See you next time.
check, check, check. Check, check. One, two, check. Jake, hey Jake, are you there? Oh, my cross top or uh, side tone's very low. There we go. I think we got to redo the white balance. What was that? I think we're gonna snip this one and put it in that jar. Two. We all settled in, settled in back there, science? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I heard we are taking a sample. I think we did. We did. Oh. I also heard we're possibly collecting the Athagorgia right in front. Oh, okay, I lied. We, okay. Got, we did, and we're also, yeah. yeah, okay. Okay. That's what I heard, too, is we took one sample, and we're about to take another. Oh. Also advise that we're getting suggestions to take in this skin directly after the sample. Okay. Roger. Very cool. We're jumping right in. All right. Ed, can you come wide a little bit so I can uh, yeah. set up for this sample? So I'm still, uh, got my watch changed over here. Thanks. Nope. And we're, uh, so we're doing sample, Niskin, white balance. Okay. You push in a little bit? Yeah, stand by. Okay. Uh, watch change later. Mm. And where's this going? Is this a slurp? This is a slurp, yes. Copy. Uh, Holding right Help. there. Uh, little more. Oh, is it the other one? Yeah, so we're going for the yellow one, I believe. Oh, apologies. Your lucky day. What the? Oh. All right, how's that for uh, length? That looks perfect to me. I'm full 
worldwide. Do you want to zoom in before we slurp it, or? Um, give me one sec. Roger. All right, let's see. Okay, you should be good. Zoom out for the slurp. Okay. Is this jar two? Jar two. That's correct. And a bit if you want to aim me. Keep pushing there, Ed, a little yeah, bit. I'll, I'll to be tilt the camera. Positioned. Sample collected. That is sample 23. Um, can we get a little bit of a zoom back onto the original coral so we can get sure. a snapshot? Perfect. Yeah. Thank me, you. Uh, Where are you? Good for zoom. Yeah. All right. That's all I should be need needing there. Um, if we can switch to grabbing a niskin, we should be perfect. Okay. Back and back. Put your down light on. Um, have we pulled any Niskins so far? None so far. Okay. So whatever you wish, whenever you want. Niskin samples have a different numbering scheme? Um, it's just one through six. And they you still use the same sample numbers, so this would be 24. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so our sample numbers are consecutive throughout the whole cruise, not just per dive. That's correct. Got it.
Maybe I'll go down to the bottom here. Start at six. Niskin six. Niskin six. Niskin six. That's a hard one to see. I, can't I think see it triggered though. I think I see the top of it. Up, upright. Oh uh, yeah, just got triggered. Just got triggered. So sample 24, Tikin in Niskin 6. Copy that. So that was the DNA one? That is correct. This is for eDNA. I think we're doing it because we're around this acanthacord that we didn't really see much of last time. Okay. Awesome. For those of you that are just tuning in or joining our live stream, um, this is Expedition NA-154. The name of this expedition is Ala Aumorana Kaiui, which means the path of the deep sea traveler. So the 4 to 8 watch just kind of joined in and is getting settled in. We just took some awesome samples. Um, I know that we have not had a chance to go around and do some introductions uh, of ourselves, but I wanted to ask first, is this an okay time to start that? Um, for me, it should be okay as long as I go last. As long as Sebastian goes last. We can do that. Hey, Jake, is this a good time to get a white balance before we come up, or...? Sure, we can get a white balance. Yeah. White balance. They're questionable on the last one. Mm -hmm. You want to do white balance, Ed? Yeah, if we could. All right, All right. bring out the arm. And this is why we get such excellent pictures, because our video team is so honored. Laser's off, right? Yeah. Yep. Right. Um, Laser's coming off. Zoom image. Oh. Uh, pour some focusing sauce on there. <laughs> Should be fine. All right, ready? I'm going to block balance the camera. This is going to take the cameras dark for eight seconds. This is intentional. Oh, yeah. And what did you say this was called, Ed? This is white balancing the camera, which did not work when they tried it uh, at the start of the dive. Mm -hmm. And it is not working now either. So we're running on preset. Noted. Thank you. Need some new tape. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I'm actually working with a company in Canada. I guess tape that's 100% white. That tape is actually blue. Actually, no, it's, it'd be on the other side because the white balance ends up. Your audio is a little bit faint, Ed, for me. I don't know if anyone copy. else. Copy, yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah, so we're, we're in a different mask. Is so. that good, Ed? We're finished? Yeah, uh, right. yeah we're, we're finished. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Stuck on the porch there.
Um, no, never mind. So for a little bit of context, we're moving up towards Waypoint 2, which is quite a distance away, uh, up the slope to the south. So as we head south, we'll be moving up Okay. Up the topography lines here. Until after we point to, yeah, because we took one over here then. Nice. Thank you for that, Derek. And it looks pretty steep. Um, so oh, I'll get out uh, right ahead of Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, waypoint two is almost 900 meters away, so. Almost a kilometer. Nice. Okay, I know Sebastian said that he needed a moment earlier if we were going to start introductions. Um, but front row, are we okay now maybe to start? Uh, I just, this is Nav, I just would like uh, some guidance on how big a steps we want to take or mm -hmm. if we want to just have a constant slow movement up this slope. I think the, uh, the point two knots constant worked well last dive, unless anyone has anything they want to change. Pilots, is um, that good for you? Or? Point two is good for s stopping and um, smelling the roses and, you know, without having to really stop the ship. Six, try that for now? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, I'll just call in that ship move. Looks um, <clears throat> like we're going to want a bearing of 192. Jake, I'm going to reboot your uh, touch uh, okay. video router panel to your right. Bridge nav. Good morning. I'd like to call in a ship move uh, tracking a line at bearing 192 at 0 0.2 knots. Can you come up on the, on the windshield a little bit? Correct. Thank you. Maybe uh, 20 meters or something. And then uh, bring heading around to the south. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sweet. Do we know what kind of samples were taken on the previous watch? I know we just took. So that what point. we have so far is previous watch grabbed a angular rock with Ooh. a red alteration. Okay. And I know you're excited about that. Uh, yeah, I'm curious what the red... As we're walking in, we were okay. taking a sample of a Bolosomia sponge, so like the guy we see in front of us. Ooh. It was a little unusual. We took a bit of a snip of that. Um, we just, as you saw, we collected a bit of yellow anthocord at Anthogorgia which is mm -hmm. a type of black coral. Mm -hmm. And then we just took our nest skin. So that's where we are. Thanks. Yeah, the, the red alteration can be a good thing or it can be a, a bad thing, so. Well, if it's a bad thing, where does it come from, um, that color? It comes from, it's called devitrification. So it's a, alteration that turns glass and volcanic glass into something else I kind of forgot off the top of my head <laughs> but in the thin section it kind of looks like a fractured like light brownish color mm -hmm. and it looks like a flower it actually is really pretty under the microscope Ooh. but those samples usually they're not good for determining the ages. Mm -hmm. So usually just skip them 
for age determinations. I'm not sure about chemical analysis because I think I still got chemical analysis from them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, I'm interested to see that sample when we get it up. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. I like not knowing what the other rock samples are. So it's like kind of a surprise when we get to the ROV to Hercules at when we lift it up. Him up. I'm actually. I wouldn't be surprised if we see nodule-sized basalts because looking at the terrain, I feel like. There could be potential for that. Hmm. That's like this size or bigger? Well, I was talking to Val yesterday to make sure I understood nodule size, and she said kind of like this big. Okay. And um, she said nugget size, but I was like, that seems too small. Or maybe I just picture small chicken nuggets, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think yeah. of like Chick Fil A is like super small chicken nuggets, and I'm like, I don't know if that. Well, yeah, I mean McDonald's are, are definitely bigger than Chick Fil A. Yeah, possibly yeah. Possibly get a zoom in on whatever that red thing is. I can't get a good look at it. Looks like a crinoid. Is it like a crinoid? A, like a baby crinoid. Aww. Yeah, I think it is a crinoid. This this thing right here? Yes. It looks like a coral. Is it coral? I can't. Oct it's super like small for me. It's not super. We can get right a now. zoom there, Ed. Quick, quick little zoom, stop zoom. Uh, ah, yeah. it's a mushroom. It's a mushroom coral. Mushroom, mushroom coral. coral. We oh. just collected one of these last dive. When they pull in their polyps, they look like a little mushroom. Looks like a, a hydra. Is that hydra? No, it's not. Okay. I'm. Joking. What do y'all do? Oh, oh, sorry. Um, a Sako from uh, our onshore scientist is calling it an anthomastis or a pseudo anthomastis. Um, I do believe we did collect one of these. Um, Steve, Tina, Asako, if you need to collect this, let me know. Um, but I believe we did collect these one of these last dive. Oh, yeah. What I was going to ask is what do the biologists do with the samples after we? We collect them? That is a fantastic question. So what we do, <laughs> um, once we get, collect our samples and bring them up after our dive, we bring them into the wet lab for our scientists aboard to take a look at. Often what will happen is for many species, we will take them, take some photographs of how they were immediately after we pulled them up. Um, depending on the this exact sample, we will subsample it, which means that we'll usually take off a small piece without mm -hmm messing up any of the morphology and we'll preserve that in a requested um was it, it preservant and uh, send them off to different to different um, collections museums or universities for eDNA studies um, the main body of whatever sample we're doing usually goes in as a holotype to a particular facility depending on the type of sample so if it's a rock a water sample, if it's an animal. Um, we have different facilities for each one. Wow. I think one of the unique aspects of um, the research that we're doing on the Ocean Exploration Trust Nautilus is our cultural protocol. Mm -hmm. So um, prior to the ROVs being set out into the ocean, we'll do a, a protocol, a Hawaiian chant, an oli, um, asking Kanaloa, the god of the ocean, um, for the knowledge that um, needs to be revealed so we can continue our um, scientific uh, research and analysis. We also do a cultural protocol when the ROV is brought back onto the deck. Mm -hmm. And it's a chant again, um, thanking, you know, in gratitude for these, really these gifts, these makana that we've collected on the seafloor and have brought up um, onto onto the ship. So just want to um, kind of emphasize that there is respect um, and gratitude for the samples that we are collecting from this very sacred place of Papa Hanaumokuakeo. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Malia. I know, I just feel, I don't know, I love looking at Atalanta's view of Hercules and just kind of seeing, I don't know, like how 
much we're seeing of the bottom of the seafloor right now and how much that's out there that like we are not getting a chance to see and just how lucky we are every time we get to see any kind of creature. Or Sorry, can we get a zoom in on, on, that. on that? What was it? This. This this cucumber? <gasps> individual. Yay. Sorry for interrupting you, Tori. No, that's <sighs> exciting. I haven't seen a sea cucumber on my watch yet. I don't think we've seen a sea cucumber on the last full dive. If we oh. were, there was a little bit of a debate on one that may have been in the oh, yeah. as well, but this one seems to be more cucumbery for me. <laughs> Whoa. And what kind of colors do they come in? Do they always look this kind of like uh, um, pinkish? From my experience, right, um, deep sea sea cucumbers typically range from a light pink to clear to a very dark purple, Ooh. maybe a little bit of a red. Um, is this guy a cucumber? Yes, he is. Um, let me get a couple of screen grabs here. Wow. Sea cucumbers serve a very important ecological role in these benthic communities. They often sift through sediments and process them for detritus, um, helping keep uh, these sediments very clear and clean on the surface. Um, they are very crucial in recycling carbon in our seas. Wow. Ooh. That's very cool. I didn't realize that they um, are recycling carbon. Uh, you, and I know you've heard, used this word detritus before, but can you explain for some of our viewers, what does that mean? Yeah, of course. So detritus is yeah, functionally any bad. form of organic matter that is, have been already pretty processed yeah. or Kind That's of view the gauge, the, the, yeah, the, Atlanta. Um, deteriorated. The cam that's tilting? That's the uh, However, camera. However, most of these benthic detritivores are really good at processing them and really? getting all they can out of it. That just moved um, on its own. Uh, so they can really eat the most bottom to bottom of basic there it goes nutrients again. possible. Do they do anything? Do they have anything for protection against predators? Fantastic question. They do. Depending on the species, some species, particularly shallow water species, will actually, um, what's what I'm looking for, put out. Hey, Jake, their do you want me to throw that into a recorder oh, just so you can their have a record? And usually that yeah. will deter an animal, or sometimes the animal will be like, oh, this is food, and eat it, and then walk away. Some more. Um, some oh. sea cucumbers do oh, also. Oh, I got it recorded use, anyway. Um, it's already recorded. Poisonous compounds. You just know, let me know at the time. To the uh, 1426, um, got it. But, yeah. We're not looking for one of these guys on our trip, so uh, we should be good to move on. Nice. Wow. Thank you for that. Can you remind us, Sebastian, what kind of uh, biological samples or what might we be looking for? I know we were looking for jellyfish yes. on our last dive. So we have been looking for some jellyfish, um, particularly some that are like pretty colorful or uniquely morpho or unique morphologies. Um, we are also looking for various types of glass sponges with unique morphologies, mm -hmm. including some of the more of those Bolosomia species, like the glass sponge we saw and collected from earlier. Um, we are also looking for a lot of cushion or cookie stars. Uh, so these are guys that are kind of roundish compared to your normal stars, a little bit more tiley on the top, that's how I describe it. Ooh, you said cookie star? Yes, cookie star. Nice, we'll look up a picture of that. You can I was also, thinking the exact you're also same looking thing, for a couple uh, leather stars as well. Let me clarify, cookie starfish. Uh, um, the actual, the correct um, terminology now is sea stars. Sea so stars. Starfish are not fish, <laughs> they are mm. invertebrates. Um, we all are also are of note that kind of slipped our minds during the last dive. We are looking for a specific species genus of shrimp called Labaeus that lives on soft corals and inside hexaactinellids, so our glass sponges. So it's a little kind of reddish pink shrimp that sticks around on those. So we're going to keep a good eye out for those as well. Oh, uh, is nice. that a crinoid? Yeah. That is a sea star, I believe. Yeah, that one. Oh, wait. Is that a crinoid? It looks like it might be in the water column a little bit. Yeah. It, it's, oh, it's moving. A, oh, that is definitely a sea star. It is moving. Good eye, Hannah. You're spotting some really good stuff. 
Well, I do put my face like <laughs> right in front of the monitor. Like I said, I feel like I'm playing I Spy or something. Well, it might actually be a brittle star if I'm getting Whoa, closer. Look at it move. Oh, wow. Can we get a good zoom in to see the um, basal disk? Whoa. Wait till you see one jump. Jump? Yeah. <laughs> I think this is the first time I've seen one move like this. Wow. You're good for zoom in. Go on in. I was on mute. <laughs> oh, and look, the other tentacles, they don't look as, as large. Disc. Yep, those are definitely, that is definitely a brittle star. So these are the guys, the opioids that you see wrapped around a lot of these deep sea corals down here. This guy might be looking for a new home. Oh. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Why would they maybe leave their previous home? Um, sometimes maybe predation, predation. Um, if they're not getting into good enough currents, they may say like, huh, this might not be a good spot for me, and go find something a little bit taller. Yeah, maybe it was predation, because look at his two, The upper ones look... Yeah, he's, they're gone. They appear to have lost a little bit of the tips on two of their arms, so that may have been an inducing incident for them to make a move. And will they go back? Yes, they will. Echinoderms have very good regenerative abilities, particularly for their arms. As long as their basal disc right there you see in the middle isn't mm. damaged, usually they're very good at repairing. So, wow. for, because they, they don't have eyes, right? Um, that's a good question. Some do. I believe some do on the ends of their arms. I am unsure, particularly about opioids, like I'll this call guy. I'll go out of frame. But, um, yeah, it is, some sea stars do have that capability. So he just feels it out, though? Um, they have usually pretty good, like, sensitive uh, bits on their arms that allow them to kind of gauge their environment. And some of them can be very sensitive to water out. quality as well. Wow. Cool. Nice. Uh, Hannah, we got a question about some of the rocks in the area. Um, yeah. Someone, one of our viewers noticed that some of them look a little bit lighter in color, so they're wondering if that means that they just haven't had as much time to be coated by the manganese crust. All right, back row, we're, we're kind of um, setting up no. for an engineering okay, test. Thanks for letting us know. Oh, oh just the So um, we're going to turn off all the lights on Hercules in uh, the next few minutes and uh, try and see what we can we can see with uh, Atalanta and the lights and kind of test out for this future archaeological dive. Yep, so. Thank you guys. Do we have an altitude on Atalanta? We do. Okay. Okay. Uh, Copilot, is your mic muted right now? Are you muted right now? Uh, not on. Uh, he's, he's not, not on, on SPL. SPL. So if you uh, same thing there, it'll be actually talking on SPL there. 